while we're in the middle of shooting season two of Home Diagnosis. As you can see, we've got lights in here. We've got two very expensive cameras being operated by highly qualified professionals getting all this B-roll. I'm gonna go ahead and run this test on this duct insulation, which we brought into the house. Grace said, I think a cat peed on that. And apparently no cats have peed on this. It always smells like that. So now we're curious. So we're running one of our prison analytical uh, laboratory tests on it. We're gonna go ahead and break this open right now. And I want to find out what is in this. So we simply turn on the pump, get this thing so that the arrow is pointing down. And this is not how this is intended to be used, but I want to know what's going on inside this stuff. So we're going to find that out. We'll share the info with you later. So now that we have the test results back from this cat pee smelling duct insulation that we've been installing. We have Dr. Alice Delia from Prism Analytical with us again. Thank you very much for being here again, Dr. Delia. Thank you. Uh, so first of all, was the test that we ran okay as far as your laboratory analysis? And also, was it interesting in any way? Yes, yes to both. Um, people collect the samples in all sorts of odd places. Uh, depends what their question is, you know, what they're concerned about or what they're curious about. Um, so yeah, anywhere you put it, you know, we always get something interesting out of it. Um, in terms of the test results themselves, uh, compared to the initial tests that we did a while ago now, um, the, the VOCs in general have gone down quite a bit, hmm. uh, by at least a factor of five. Um, so now we're looking at what I guess I would more typically call, call a normal level you'd see in a house, um, with a relatively normal, I can use that term loosely, mix of chemical compounds. Uh, the only thing that really stuck out a lot was um, the big category for PVC cement, uh, which is primarily related to the presence of a chemical called tetrahydrofuran. Um, so that one doesn't have a lot of other sources. There's always the possibility that it's from something else. A lot of these products have proprietary blends, so you don't actually know specifically what's in them. Um, but that was high in the initial tests as well. So this, I would say, is probably just, it's coming down with everything else, but because it was so high initially, it's still at, at what we would typically consider an elevated level. So interesting. I mean, it seems like, first of all, there is PVC cement applied in here because we have all the plumbing drain sure. lines that are all put together with that. But that was months ago at this point. I mean, not, I don't know if it was months ago, month and a half. So I think that probably now that it's dried, I mean, I can't smell it, but I do keep the canisters of that stuff in the house here. And so mm -hmm. is it enough that it's just, I mean, I, I guess my question is if a normal person in a normal house or condo had a canister of PVC primer and a canister of PVC cement, would they potentially have the same levels that you're calling elevated in your analysis as what we're seeing here? It could be. Um, a lot of it depends on how, you know, well that the, they were closed, how tightly. Um, and in most of those types of products, once you open the product, it's really hard to get it all the way sealed. Um, well, having worked with it also, you don't want to crank it down real right. tight because then it's impossible to get back. It's, I mean, it's cement, so. It is cement, yes, exactly. <laughs> so you do need to be a little careful with that. Almost everything is potentially permeable. Um, you know, metal would be one of those things that would be less permeable. Um, as again, once you break that seal, you know, you, you rarely can get that seal to be as, as tight as it was initially. Um, but this is one of the problems with gases is we don't think about the fact that they're going to go through the wall, the drywall, all the rest of that. They'll go through cement. Um, people in their basements have had problems because their, their home is sitting on top of, a, you know, a former gas station or something. So there's gas or, or oil, or whatever has seeped into the ground and it, it can um, ease its way back up even through the concrete. I mean, it looks like it's solid, but it, it is actually partly permeable. So amazing. Um, yeah, they go everywhere. This is the thing. It's so with particles or dust or pollen or, you know, those kinds of things, you can, you can see the movement of them. Um, you know, that little, little dust particles dancing in the sunlight and that ray of sun coming through your window kind of thing. So you know that they're there. Um, over time, they're going to settle on surfaces and all of a sudden you realize you haven't dusted in a while and all that kind of thing. Um, but with the gases, you don't really see them. You only smell some of them. Um, and, you know, maybe you just always feel a little bit tired or got a little sniffly nose. And, you know, that could be a lot of things, but it could certainly be just a high level of, of the gases in the air. Mm -hmm. 
I, I feel less high than I would like to while I'm building. So maybe we can t t tweak the uh, chemistry in here. So here's, and I do feel exhausted a lot of the time. So with the question though about this cat pee smell, which would you agree that urea, I mean, I drive a diesel truck and I put uh, DEF, which is diesel exhaust fluid, which is basically pure urea in there. Mm -hmm. And it's got a very strong smell. I don't know if it's an ammonia smell in the cat urine or the what, but it definitely like had that, it was redolent of animals um, having <laughs> micturated on my materials. Yep. Would you say, I mean, it didn't show up there. And, and what I am smelling is a VOC. Would you, do, would, would you agree? Yep. Okay, so anything that we smell is a VOC likely. Um, so the fact that I can smell it, even when I'm within 20 feet of this stuff, but, but that it did not show up in an elevated way over what normal people have in their normal homes, it, is that a way, is that like my body telling me that there's just something, is it like a, just a very tangy scent that I will notice at first and then it kind of blends when I've got more smells in here from the cooking smells and all the, mm -hmm. the people smells mm -hmm. and everything. Is it going to kind of blend in the background? Is it sticking out right now because of it's a more sterile space? Um, well, there's a lot of reasons why you might notice a, uh, an odor um, and not be able to detect it in, you know, laboratory result or some piece of equipment, you know, hand, there are some handheld uh, pieces of equipment that you can use to try to find hot spots essentially. So one of them is that many of the chemical compounds that have strong odors uh, produce those odors at very small amounts. If you have to really know what you're looking for if you want to try to pick up those really small um, concentration types of molecules. Uh, another one is that the odor characteristics are also very personal. So almost everybody perceives them differently and perceives them at different levels. So something that might be knocking somebody over is something that the person standing next to them might not even notice. So it's, it's a really complicated process. So that's, that's another one of those things. Um, and it also, as you said, once you have more activities going on, there will be additional things that are, will come into play and that may essentially, again, kind of bury that particular odor a little bit in the background. As well, once you close up all the walls and all that, you're going to slow whatever, if, if it's in that uh, insulation, it's going to slow the movement once you've got walls in place. It won't stop it, but it'll likely slow it down. So there's a bunch of things that might cause that that odor to either change, um, be less noticeable, or ha it may just need more time to dissipate. Too. And once I do, like right now, what we've got is if I when, once I install it, it's got a mylar coating on the outside of the fiberglass, and then the duct which is metal, is right there. So it's kind of encapsulating it. Now, if I encapsulate something, is it going to come out like it's basically depleting an entire store? It's got this much of the whatever it is that I'm smelling, mm -hmm. and I make it slower so it'll come out over a longer time now? Is that kind of what I've done instead of having it all come out in a short period of time? It's all still going to come out. It's just going to take 10 years to do it instead of one year? Right. But in that 10-year time period, you probably won't notice it. Uh, whereas opposed to that one year, it could be extremely annoying and it makes, you know, you may decide, hey, this is just not worth it. I'm, I'm moving out or, you know, those kinds of things. So, um, but there is always that, that equilibrium, right? So it's going to emit at a certain rate as the air moves through it, as other things change, you know, temperature, that humidity, those kinds of things are all going to affect that rate. So I'm, I'm always curious when we start talking, uh, yeah. I, this is not like completely on topic, but I'm, I'm interested. You said that different people will sense different things. And I got the sense from Charlie Weschler that uh, some of uh, us have receptors for certain chemicals and some of us do not. Is it a physical difference when like, for example, what I'm thinking of is somebody becomes environmentally sensitive. They have some experience that then changes their perception of chemicals. Is that, do you think, I don't know if there's research around this, but is that a physical change where you actually, your body creates new receptors or is it just that it's a psychosomatic thing where your body now reacts differently to the same chemicals that it's always sensed? Um, well, somebody who becomes chemically sensitive, um, often it's uh, a sudden exposure to something. Um, maybe they were getting spray foam insulation put in and it was misapplied and they got a big hit of, you know, whatever the contaminants were from that. And so sort of forever after that has indeed changed how their uh, body reacts to certain chemicals. Um, 
odors are more, um, it's more, there is some physical differences in terms of the receptors, um, but a lot of it is that odors tend to get linked to memories. And so depending on, you know, if you love the smell of diesel because, you know, your dad is a truck driver and whatever, or you hate it because of, you know, so then you'll have an emotional reaction to it that'll make you like it or dislike it. Um, and we'll tend to change how you perceive it as well. So it's kind of a mixture in terms of odors. So odors and uh, the perception of odors and chemical sensitivity are related to each other, but they're not exactly the same. Interesting. So if I just, if I start associating the smell of cat pee with that jelly bean that I got at the fair instead of with cat pee, cat pee. <laughs> it might be, yeah. I'll just change my experience of it, make it more pleasurable for myself. Yeah, maybe, you know, if you, if you have 20 cats and you love your cats and so cat pee is a great, it's a great scent for you. I, I have two cats in a tiny house and I do love my cats, but I, their pee is still something that uh, is, should not be, it should only be in one specific place oh, when it's like misplaced. That's yeah. when it's a problem. Yes. Yes. Well, Dr. Delia, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you uh, helping us kind of analyze this and find out if it was something to worry about or not. It sounds like it's not really something to worry about and it's just part of life, which is full of chemicals, just like we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. I will keep on uh, testing what we're doing and I, we will talk with you again. For all of you who are watching, make sure that you go to Prism Analytical's uh, website if you would like to have some of this testing for yourself. It's very easy to do, as you've seen me do it on our uh, site. And so you can do this stuff. They turn it around for you and you can have exactly the same analysis that we've had here. Make sure that you comment, like, subscribe. Tune in next time. Mm -hmm.